said it, each and every week, Thankful Thursdays, we have the activities of our limbs. We have our right mind. We ain't in nobody's jail. And by the grace of God and his continued mercy, we ain't in nobody's hospital. And if you know what's going on in the world right now, I'm telling you, I feel like everybody has gone back crazy. Is it me or am I tripping, man? Like a part of me feels so grateful to God that I was raised the way I was. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm the last generation of them real G's slash real Z's. You get it, Z? Real G's. You know what I'm saying? So I just feel like it is a lot going on and I'm sick of it. Honestly, to be honest with you, I'm sick of it because I don't like when people are uh, smart and they don't use their intelligence um, to make their situations better. In fact, they use their intelligence to do the polar opposite. And if you're tuning in, and you're listening to Yah said, and before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. And I know you heard me the first time. I'm your host, your girl, Jaja all the way from Detroit. And I have so many amazing people um, that I want to thank. And I want to thank you, A, for tuning in today and um, sharing your birthday love with me. Um, I share my my birthday was Friday. Your girl, listen, your girl is getting found like wine. I'm trying to tell you, okay? You want know to tell you? Know so anywho, um, but if you're tuning in, I'm talking all about uh, sick of it. And, you know, I, all I could think about was a Tupac song. I see no changes. All I see is racist faces. Some, some, something. Escape the something. And uh, it, it, y'all know the song I'm talking about. So anyway, but it, all it does is remind me of the continued hamster wheel that not only uh, the GOV has us on, but our own people. And one of the things that I have found to exacerbate that and make it worse is the fact that we don't look to make sure that we are a healing ourselves and b paying attention to what's going on we cannot be so oblivious so blind and so caught up in what we got going on that we are not paying attention to the world that we're living in one of the first things that i have noticed is that we have the tendency to uh what do you, we, we like to cancel the culture. Um, recently, we have experienced some stuff in our city that is just, it gets to the point where you just be like, you know what, I'm just sick of it. I, I'm, I'm like, you, you, when you're dealing with people or certain situations and certain things, and like you, you just be like, you know what, I'm sick of it. I'm done. I ain't got to deal with this. I, you know what, you can go, you can leave. I quit. Uh, I'm done with this. Have you ever just been sick of a thing? or sick of a person, like you just, I, you know what, you done, well, I'm done too. And when you get to that point, it becomes a matter of loyalty and respect. When you are loyal to a friend, a company, a friendship, a family member, when you respect what you do, when you respect what you're building, when you respect your brand, anybody that's attached to you should also be willing to do so. And when they do not respect what you're building, when they are not loyal to what you are building, you don't need that type of relationships around you. I make it a point to sow seeds because I also remember sowing seeds of discourse. I remember sowing seeds of foolishness. I ain't the only one. I ain't the only one that got caught up in some stuff that I didn't need to be caught up in. And then now I got to go and either repent or, or ask God to, to, to fix what I didn't messed up. And so when you get sick of yourself, see, I got sick of myself. OK, I got sick of my own excuses. I got sick of not loving the way I looked. I got sick of not dealing with myself the way I know. I got sick of people not respecting what I'm building. I got sick of. Uh, me not getting the opportunities that I knew I was qualified for. I got sick of my own procrastination. I got sick of my own ideal of what I thought success was supposed to look like. And when you get sick of certain things, you are ready to make certain changes. But those changes do not come until you're sick and tired of being sick and tired. I know you remember the Tina Turner movie, What's Love Got to Do With It? She stayed with Ike for 
forever through the losing her hair, through the babies, through the cheating. And it wasn't until that one scene in the hotel. I mean, the one scene in the limousine on her way to the hotel when she found herself sick and tired of being sick and tired. See, the things that are happening within our, within our community, within our culture, within within our city, within our, our elected officials, within our community, they ain't sick and tired. See, when you get sick and tired of certain repetitive behaviors, you want change. See, this is the thing that we have to understand. Some people are complacent. They are, they are fine being obese. They are fine being unhealthy. They are fine uh, going ahead and listening to the GOV and, and going and get that S-H-O-T. Uh, they, they fine with it because we're always looking for a quick fix. We're not looking for changes. We're looking for quick fixes. And if we're not careful, that quick fix will put us right back where we started. See, right now I'm finishing up my book, Dear Carlin. It was supposed to come out last year. But me trying to skip steps, me trying to make it faster, I ended up putting myself right back in the position where I was at. And see, sometimes when you don't realize that it's you that got to change, you'll think it's everybody else. You'll think it's everybody else. And at the end of the day, when you learn to say, you know what? Enough is enough. I don't want to deal with this no more. I'm tired of the way that this is happening and I need to change. You know, sometimes people get sick and tired and they want change. And the only change that they see is suicide. The only uh, change that they see is embezzlement or uh, doing something illegal. Sometimes they feel like their only option is this particular thing. We've all been there. We've all done some things and been a part of some situations that we had no business. Not just because we had no business, but because we weren't raised like that, because we know that there are other opportunities. But at the end of the day, when you got your back up against the wall and you and you feel like you're trying to make some things shape, you end up inadvertently being a part of certain things. Now, this is where things get tricky because you either are gonna stay in that place of complacency or you are going to take the necessary steps to make those changes. See, I didn't like my arms jiggling and my son videotaping me from the back seat laughing at my little fat arms. So I had to make a change. And that change was, okay, sis, you're going to have to do some push-ups. You're going to have to change how you eat. You're going to have to do some things. I didn't feel comfortable in some of the clothes that I was wearing. And it wasn't nobody else's fault that I felt insecure or felt certain a certain type of way when I was around another woman and looked physically better than me. No, I had to make those necessary changes. And see, some people, they like quick fixes and they don't like necessary changes. See, I wanted to go get me a, a, a BBL. I want to go get it tight, get it right. You know what I'm saying? And everybody that goes there is not doing it for of uh, vain purposes. Some people, you know, they've had their abdominal muscles shredded from C-sections and different things of that nature. So they have to go and get that extra mm, help. But when you get sick and tired of looking at yourself and looking at the results that you know you can have. See, I was looking at other people's results, not jealous, not envious, but I was just thinking and praying and asking God, like, God, I don't want to be here no more. I, I'm, I'm ready. And God was saying, no, nah, sis, you, you might be physically ready, but you ain't mentally ready, you know, or you might be mentally ready, but your emotions are still off. You may be emotionally ready, mentally ready, but physically you can't even keep up with nobody. So if God did bless you, you barely can walk a mile, let alone uh, uh, keep up with the people that's out here making it happen. See, when I went out to L.A. and I got out there with them other women that were out there and I saw how they was looking for these commercials and these TV shows and different things of that nature. I said, oh, no, they're not about to overlook me. Let me go. Where, where's my carrots? Where's my celery? Let, let me get let me get aligned. Let me get myself together. Let me get my fasting and praying together because I won't change. I don't want to be overlooked for the opportunity when God comes with it. When God comes with the opportunity to say, go, you got to be ready. Here it is. You cry. Oh, God, 
please help me increase my finances. God, we need more money. We need this. And then when God get ready to drop it, when he get ready to show it for you, when he get ready to, to do it for you, you're not even in a position to be equipped to handle what God is trying to give you. And this is one of the things that I love about God because love changes everything. When you do what you love, you have the propensity to change the world. See, our world is not changing because people are not doing what they love. They are doing what they see other people do. And you are going to mess yourself up copying off of somebody else because you think that's what you're supposed to be doing or it becomes easier to copy off somebody else. Now, don't get the game twisted as a leader. As an influencer, I am well aware that people are going to be gunning for me because I have solidified myself in a particular spot, in a particular lane that people think that they can do. And I watch and I listen and I look and I say, no, nah, you ain't got it yet. And it's not to say um, I'm not encouraging them to get it. But what I know is you got to be mindful of people who want to do what you do, but they don't love it. It's like a person who wants to cook. If you don't love to cook, you won't be a great chef because you don't love what you do. If you don't love helping people as a, as a nurse practitioner or as a doctor, then guess what? It's going to show in your skill. Have you ever met somebody who works at a company and you could tell they hate their job? You can tell they don't like it. You can tell by their attitude. You can tell by how they move. You can tell by their mannerisms. How can I help you? They giving you all that. They giving you that vibe. What What can I do for you? Next, you have you ever been somewhere? You come in. There, Hello, good morning. How are you? How can I help you? Oh, you don't like. You don't want to be here. See, when you start being sick of yourself and sick of knowing that I'm better than this, I don't belong here. See, this is one of the reasons why I love the, the story of the prodigal son, being able to have everything at your doorsteps and you go out and you do what you want to do. And it can be embarrassing. It can be real, real, real embarrassing when you go out in life and have to come back and humble yourself. And this is one of the reasons why you got to do what you love, because if you don't do what you love, you're going to end up doing what somebody else loves. And if you're tuning in, you're listening to Yeah, I Said It, and before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. And I know you heard me the first time. Listen, you are tuning in, listening to Yeah, I Said It, and I'm talking all about sick of it. Because when you get sick of it, you make those necessary changes. A woman in domestic violence situations, she gets sick of it, she going to leave. When a man gets tired of a relationship and he has had enough as enough, he going to leave. When you tired of not being able to fit in your clothes and you really make that conscientious decision, enough is enough. I got to make some physical changes. When you're tired of being depressed and dealing with anxiety and dealing with people who, who don't see your value or your worth, then you realize enough is enough. And I got to work on me to the point where I can't be bamboozled, hoodwinked, or distracted about how you feel about me, about how they feel about me. And guess what? Y'all ready for this? I can't even be hoodwinked and bamboozled about how I feel about me. There were days where I did not feel worthy. There were days where I did not feel like I I I I match or you know I'm I'm at the level I need to be. You know, I felt like I, I was down on myself, like just on myself, like and then I had to, you know, the enemy has a way of messing with your mind, making you feel like you're not enough. You're not good enough. And I had to get really deep down in my word and really pray and ask God, what is it that you have me to do? And am I on the right path? Because sometimes we can think we're on the right path um, to what God wants us to do. When it ain't what God wants us to do, it's what you want to do. God wanted none of that. You, you wanted to do it. And now that you're in it, and Sometimes when we get into things, we get overwhelmed. We didn't realize, okay, I didn't know this was going to uh, take so much out of me. I didn't realize that this was going to cause me to have so much more effort and time. It's like a woman who wants and desires to have a baby. Yeah, you desire and want to have a kid and all of it is cool and dandy until you got to wake up at 2 in the morning, 3 in the morning, 4.45 in the morning. When you sleepy and your baby up and want to play, 
What do you do? What do you do when you you want to go hang out here, but you got to pick your kid up for football practice here? You want to go do this over here, but you got to go pay bills over here. This is the this is the part where you have to make those necessary changes, because if you don't make those necessary changes, life will eat you up. There were days where I literally wanted to kill myself. Can you believe that? Like, I want to take myself out of here. My amazing self that I am. I want to. But the enemy will have you psychologically messed up. You'll start thinking all type of crazy stuff. And even dealing with this COVID stuff right now, this this stuff has got our people all how are we back in Jim Crow laws? You, we discriminate. You got a mask. You don't got a mask. You vaccine, vaccinate. You ain't vaccinate. First of all, we didn't have none of this last year. None of it. So when we are operating in a space where people are scared and they're fearful and then they talk about they love God and God is their savior. How? How do you say that you have faith? In a God that you cannot see, faith in his son, size of a mustard seed, but you won't believe that he will protect you and cover you. You don't believe that he has provided you with all of the natural nutrients that you need in order to survive anything that life throws your way. See, this is where confidence in God has to increase in the families and the lives of our children. Our children are watching the adults and how we handle the pressure, how we handle disappointments, how we handle our finances, how we deal with our credit, how we deal and build up our households. Our sons are watching their fathers, e even if they're not in the household or even if they are. Our daughters are watching their mothers. They are watching how they act how they do things, how they operate in stressful situations, how they deal with they mate. And if you're not careful, you will mess your children up, not giving them the proper nutrients and wisdom and knowledge that they need. And it's not just your kids. It's your friends, it's your family. It's the people in the lives that God has you connected to, to be able to touch. See, our leadership here is only corrupt because we keep allowing it. We turn a blind eye to so many things. And then we get mad when they attack our people. Why didn't they raid Duggan's house? Why didn't we, why didn't they blast him on two, four and seven? They gave him a little snippet of a story and they kept it moving. But we real quick to cancel our own culture. But we let this white man rob people with a police pension, a firefighting pension. They retirement pension, their houses were taken from them, their, their jobs were taken from them. They have literally flooded y'all basements. They have literally like increased all kind of things, but we'll go cancel them, but we won't cancel the people we supposed to cancel. We'll clap back at them, but we won't clap back at the people who are hindering us and putting us in situations that we know we shouldn't be in. Oh, we turn into a little scary mouse with them. Yeah, I said it. And before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. If you're tuning in and if you're listening, you're listening to see, yeah, I said it. And before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. I'm talking about I'm sick of it. Enough is enough. See, when you are, when you are sick of being tired and tired of being sick, you ready to make those necessary changes. See, I'm not about to play with my life. You know why? Because I don't get another one. When you are gone and you leave this earth, you are gone. So while you are here, you have an assignment. And it ain't about getting the best, best this and the most this and the, the I, look at me, look at me. When I post things about my successes or things that are happening in my life, it's not to show out. It's not to be braggadocious. It's not to say, oh, look at me. It's to say, if it can happen to me. It go back to the Everest commercial. If, 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 if it can happen to me, it can happen for you. But you got to make it work for you, though. You got to make what God has given you work for you. There were times where I was homeless living in my sister-in-law's den. And I was still doing the show. You didn't know I was homeless. You didn't know that I was carless 
or jobless. You know why? Because I was consistent because I knew that this passion and the purpose that God gave me one day, I ain't going to always be homeless. I ain't going to always be carless. I ain't going to always be the be the, the one watching everybody else's success. God going to open up a door and it's going to be me one day. See, I didn't look at people's situation and be envious. Look at them being great. Oh, they don't. They they got the forty under forty. They got the this. They got that. They did I didn't do that. I was like, y'all better go because I knew my time was coming. And see, I got sick and tired of people being fake, acting like they love you, care about you, supportive to you, and they really ain't. People will use you as long as they can use you. And the minute that you need them or you anticipate or hope that they're going to show up and show out for you, they ain't nowhere near around. So what I had to learn and put in my spirit, I don't care about how long I've known you. Get the hell away from me with that foolishness. Yeah, I said it before I take it back. I'm going to add more to it. I don't need no fake love. I don't need no fake friendships. I don't need no fake family members. I don't need no wishy-washy people around me. I need solid, consistent folks. And let me tell you something. I'm so super grateful that A, what I want, I am, okay? See, some of y'all want real people in your life, but you fake. Some of y'all want solid relationships, but you fold. Some of y'all want a man to be all in love with you, but you ain't worth loving. You trifling. Some of y'all want a, a wife and, and, and submissive, but you crazy. You need to get yourself in order before you go mess somebody else's life up. See, this is one of the things that I was so focused on because I was sick of me. And when you get sick of you, you start working on you. You don't blame nobody else for your situations. You don't blame nobody else for the position that you've been put in. But this is what you do. You pay attention. You pay attention to the people who put you in those positions. And you pay attention to the results and the outcome. See, when I was in certain situations, I recognized I wasn't healed because the minute somebody said something to me, I was triggered. And when you're triggered by certain things, that means you are not healed from them. And there are people who are watching me. They're not healed. They're not healed from whatever thing they got going on. And when you're not healed for whatever thing you got going on, they're going to push stuff off on you. They are mothers and grandmothers and aunts and uncles and dads and granddads that are not healed. Our people are literally traumatized. I got a brother right now who just came home a few months ago. He came by last night. Shout out to my brother, Tony. And uh, he did 12 years in prison. And I know I did 10 days. In jail, okay? And it changed me forever. Ever, 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 ever. So imagine a person going through what they're going through all their life. They had to deal with a crackhead mama or poverty or dealing with um, molestation or rape or dealing with these traumatic experiences. Or they might not have dealt with any of those things at all. Maybe they just wanted somebody to love them. Maybe they just wanted to be have a, a real friend because they were a real friend of somebody else and they've been missing that. There was a point where I was a great friend to a lot of women in my life and they were not good friends to me. They were not good friends to me. They sat around and they talked about me. They sat around and tried to set me up. And you would think in your mind, well, why would you want to do that? And I always came through for you. But see, when you get sick and tired of being sick and tired, you don't want no fake friends no more. You can, I don't care how long I know you. I don't want your friendship because your friendship is costing me my peace. When you start dating and that person that you're dating is causing more problems than they are pleasure, you too expensive. You got to go. See, and you also under, have to understand that our people have been not only traumatized, but we have been so conformed to be against each other that the minute that you got to listen to a leader, you want to feel some type of way. Why I got to listen to her? Who is she? Who do she think she is? The person who has more than you. That's why you got to listen to me. I'm the person with the experience. See, sometimes we don't want to listen to nobody because of the pride and the ego and the arrogance that we have that has been infiltrated in our communities. Oh, I don't need to listen to her. Who do she think she is? 
somebody who's had enough experience to help you not run into the same BS that I ran into. That is one of the reasons why I take mentorship so serious. Not because I want to be like, oh, I'm a mentor and I'm helping people and I'm doing this. No, I'm not doing it for that. I'm doing it because I want these people, these young ladies, these young men, these women, these men to make better decisions. Because when you start making better decisions for yourself, guess what? You can start making better decisions for other people that's around you. And now people start looking to you for knowledge and wisdom because now you look like the expert that you say you are. You look like the person who's actually doing what you say you're doing. But you got to be careful to not let that pride and that ego leave. Because sometimes we'll get up here and God will drop us. Because we think we got there on our own. We think, oh, I ain't had no help. Ain't nobody helped me. Ain't nobody do nothing. I got it out the mud. Well, guess what? I didn't get nothing out the mud, okay? I had help. I'm grateful for the help that I got. And I still need help. I ain't turning nothing down but my collar. And at the end of the day, you got to be careful that you are not so high and mighty that you think, oh, I've arrived. No, boo-boo. Because God will snatch all of that from you and you will be a thing of the past. Who? Who are you? Who? You did what? Because I'm going to tell you something. When you let pride and arrogance lead, you hinder great relationships. When you don't know how to ask for forgiveness or apologize when you are wrong or check yourself, you end up hindering relationships that were supposed to be built on stuff, solid stuff. You was able to build with these people. But because pride and arrogance are the lead, it's hard to do that. I know this because all I could think about was when my mom passed away all the times that we spent being mad at each other. All the times that we spent fussing and fighting when we were supposed to be loving each other as a family. Now, don't get me wrong. We had really great times. My mom was an amazing mom, you know, and, and I was a great daughter. I ended up being in a leadership position a lot earlier than what I needed to be. And y'all know the story. I'm the oldest of five sisters, three brothers. I raised my brothers and sisters. I raised my siblings when my mama passed. All of that. Y'all know all of that. My home went in a foreclosure, too, when that situation happened. I was in my little duplex. I had a hole in my roof, hole in the ceiling, stuff leaking, windows cracked. But we was just making it do what it do. We was just making it do what it do. But see, one of the things that I learned growing up about, about humbling myself before I get humbled, because we think, oh, I could tell somebody else what to do. Or you don't got you don't tell me what to do or who am I to listen to you? You are going to have to learn to listen to somebody. Listen, if you're tuning in, you're listening to y'all. I said it and before I take it back. I'm going to add more to it. And I know you heard me the first time. Listen, make sure you tune in tomorrow, uh, tomorrow for my TV show, Uncommon Conversations with Jaja. Listen, I have a special guest and I mean, this young lady is a very, 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 very special friend of mine. Very, very great sister. Um, and I mean, when I tell you this young lady is such a, um, she's a joy to be around. Have you ever been around somebody that just got good vibes? You know what I'm saying? They just got real vibes. It ain't no weird, fake stuff. You know, they ain't no know who you think you are. They ain't no know. And, and my sister friend, uh, Nikki Cole Beach will be my guest on my show tomorrow. Uh, it, it airs tomorrow, Uncommon Conversations, channel 15.2, channel 90. It's also on my YouTube and it's also on my website, jajachubbard.com. Make sure you go and check out that and share. Share the share my content. You share everybody else stuff. Share this video. Share, 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 share. Because she talks about uh, being a parent, um, getting your kids back in school as we're preparing to do so. And she talks about the, the challenges and the changes that she has had to face and, and the scrutiny of being in the public eye. And see, a lot of us, yeah, we want the fame. We want the fortune. We want the people yelling our names and we want all this, that and the third. But what do you do when you ain't in the mood for it? Yeah, everything is glitz and glams when the lights are on. But what do you do when you just want to go to the store and they still like, whoo. What do you do when all you want to do is just pump your gas and they they walking up to you? So she talks a lot about um, being in the limelight her whole life. And um, 
It's a beautiful feeling when you can have a sisterhood and a friendship with another individual that thinks so highly of you as you do them. It is a beautiful relationship and friendship when you value what they bring to the table before they get famous, before they get accolades, before they get the awards. That's a beautiful feeling. So if you tune in, I'm talking all about I'm sick of it. So make sure that you tune in tomorrow for that TV show. Listen, when you are dealing with trauma and unhealedness and pride and arrogance, you end up setting yourself up in situations you don't even want to be in. I remember I called myself going off on my mama, telling her what to do, telling her what I ain't going to do. And she put my black behind right on out. OK, I don't know about y'all, but my mama put me out and. You know, well, if you think you're grown, y'all know the speech. Well, if you think you're grown, well, then you're going to take your grown self up out of here and you go make it happen for you. Because two grown women can't live in the same household and, uh, and I'm the one paying all the bills. I promise you, it's so funny how we end up reiterating or regurgitating uh, things that we've said or heard our parents say. And it's so funny to me. But it was funny because um, that was a wake up call for me. I left and I went, called myself, going to another relative's house. You know, you I'm going to fix you. I am going to leave. I was over there at these people's house. They had cats and they wasn't even their cats. I was waking up to somebody telling me to go to the store every, every morning to go get cigarettes and Swisher sweets. It's 7 a.m. You want me to go to the store for cigarettes and Swisher sweets? You want some swishers? I'm still asleep. Why is there a cat by me? But all that did was make me more grateful for what my mom taught me, how she raised us. It made me appreciate what I thought I was missing. See, some of us think we are missing and we'll go out somewhere else to think that we're going to miss something, to get something, but we end up missing a mark. I'm sitting over here with a beautiful home got my own room, all my mother asked for me was respect, R-E-S-B-E-C-T. But I found myself trying to be haughty and feel and get my two cents because I'm, I'm feeling myself and I'm grown. But the, the concept wasn't that she was trying to dictate me. She was sick of the disrespect. She was sick of working all day and, and having to deal with certain situations. And I couldn't be mad at it because you got to think, when you are dealing with certain things in life as an adult, because see, we adults now. When you was in high school, middle school, elementary school, you didn't think adulting was going to be this hard. You didn't think that after you turned 18, that it was going to be a whole wake up call. See, let me tell you something. It was a whole wake up call for me and with a baby. I, it was a wake up call and I got a baby. So not only here it is me trying to dictate my life. But I ain't got a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out of. And it wasn't that my mom took pleasure in putting me out. She, it was the fact that I needed to learn to humble myself in somebody else's situation. When God allows you and blesses you to have certain things, who are you to be haughty and, and try to make it seem as if that won't be taken away from you? See, right now, people's health is being compromised. You don't realize how much you love your life and how much health is important until you start looking around and people are getting sick. Now you are taking on a, a lot more of a, a, a mindset of, I got to make sure I take care of myself. I got to make sure I'm around the right people. See, now you understand that growth is inevitable. See, when I was laying on that couch around with these cats and being woken up, all I could think of was, I need to grow up. And I need to get out my feelings. I need to pay attention to what's happening in my life. I got a kid I got to raise. I can't be getting into it with my mama. I need my mama right now. My mama is helping me. So let me get out my feelings and get out my attitude and be, and be tired of myself, get sick of myself and get rid of this stuff because this attitude that I have is hindering the relationship that I want with my mom. See, sometimes your arrogance, your ignorance and your pride will hinder relationships that you are supposed to have. I would have loved for my son to see me and his father get along before he went off to college.
But because he ain't healed, because he's still going through immaturity, he's still uh, suffering for whatever he's suffering from. And when you're dealing with certain things in your own life and the own tra trauma from your own life, you can't appreciate what the relationships that God has given you because you have not matured yet. You have not matriculated to a position where you value what granddad was trying to teach you. You didn't you ain't at a position in your mind and mentality to understand. Dang, that's what that's what mama said when she meant you're going to have at least two good friends. If you have two good friends, you're lucky. So you didn't understand when when grandma was trying to tell you, baby, everybody ain't your friend. That stuff is real. And those necessary changes and those necessary growth um, experiences are necessary in life. When you start looking at your pride over your purpose, you'll push your purpose further away. When arrogance and your pride, you know, because it's, it's heavy in our black community. Guys get shot because of ego. Oh, he didn't he did say something to me. Now I got to go pop the trunk instead of just being like, you know what? You a fool. Let me go exit stage left. I want to make it home today. I got a family. But how many people you know got caught up in the pride and arrogance of, of their own ego? And then they got put in a situation. Because I'm going to tell you something. A brought lesson is a taught lesson. I've been saying that since high school. A brought lesson is a taught lesson. And you're going to keep running into that same lesson until you learn there were things that kept happening to me and i kept saying god why does this keep happening why does it keep happening to me? i know i ain't the only person to ask god that why does this keep happening to me why they keep doing me like this what did i do why why what what until god starts showing me me yeah your feelings is hurt because you keep letting them hurt your feelings you worried about the wrong thing over there you ain't focused on your project here you hanging out with people that don't care nothing about you, and you know it. You over here doing something you ain't got no business, and now your feelings, and now your money funny, and your, your change is strange. Because we got to check ourselves about the things that we know that we are sick of. You sick of the stuff in your community? We'll do something about it. But you got to be consistent, because you don't, you don't get to change nothing off of one trial. See, people think because they drop a couple clothes off at the homeless shelter, go feed a few people, that that's all we need. No, baby. We have an influx of people who are always constantly going to need assistance and help. And they're always going to be people. The Bible says the poor we will have with us always. So what that means is there's always going to be areas and niches that won't ever go away. And so if you're not careful, you will be running behind ego when you should be running behind purpose and passion you'll be running behind pride and arrogance when you should be running after love and unity see people have their own personal agendas that's why you end up in chaotic situations when a person has their own agenda and not the agenda of the camp not the agenda of the group, not the agenda of the team. When a person has their own agenda, it sabotages what's been meant to build. That's why I'm always mindful of people who want to join my team, who want to be who, who want to be a part of, of what I'm building, who want to go with, with what I'm doing. No, are you passionate about what you're doing already? What are you doing already that I can look at and say, OK, yeah, they passionate about that. Because people are quick to want to run to what you're doing because they see you in positions and hanging out and doing this and doing that. But that's work. I, I come and work. Yeah, we having fun, but it's work. And if you are not careful, people will want to hang on to your coattail and not come to do no work. See, if you're going to be with me, you're going to have to do some work. I work around here. We work around here. And see, that's one of the things that I love about raising my son. Because my son was able to see me started from the bottom, okay? And I'm working my way to get there. My son saw me paying for ch gas with change just to get him to school and to get me to a meeting or to an event. My son saw how people would play me and not want to pay me and certain negotiation skills that I had to develop in order for me to get what I knew I was owed. 
See, my son is so much more equipped because I allow him access into what I'm building. I don't exclude my kid. I don't, I don't, I, I hold him tight. And, and right now we're in a phase. I'm in a, I'm in a parenting phase that's, that's different than a lot of people. Cause a lot of people are getting their kids ready to go back to school. You're getting book bags and school clothes and you're going to go make sure you, you're registering kids for school and you're doing all these different things. Well, that's not my ministry no more. My ministry is, hey, did you make it to class? How you doing this week? You all right? You ain't doing nothing crazy. Oh, okay, you good? <laughs> this is how our conversations got to go now. You understand what I'm saying? Because I'm in a different phase of parenting. I didn't already did the Nintendos, the Legos, the Bagel Bonds, the, the, the growth spurts, the, the, the emotional episodes. I've already did the, we've been through the, the fat Tayshawn, the skinny Tayshawn, the muscular Tayshawn, and now the grown young man Tayshawn. And just like he saw the fat mama, the young mama, the hair, my, my mama with hair, my mama without it, uh, and now we're at a space where we want what God has for us. And when you want what God has for you, you make the necessary changes that you're sick of having. When, when you were, when I was tired of calling myself smoking cigarettes, I smoked cigarettes literally for one year, y'all. I couldn't believe it myself, but I was stressed out. I was, I was smoking them Newport 100s. I was going to the gas station with my little 50 cent getting my little square and I was in that boy. And I, I remember one time I was, um, years ago, I was getting cash assistance. I had to be about 20 and I was in front of the, uh, the work first place or whatever it was called. I don't even remember, but I was out there smoking my cigarette. Like, I don't even want to be here. I have a resume. I've been to college. Da -da 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 -da. Bah, 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 bah. These people don't even know what they're doing. They don't even know how to type. I don't belong here. And I'm outside. I'm smoking my cigarette y'all. The man came outside. He said, you are too pretty to be smoking a cigarette. And I said, well, if you had the life I had, you'd be smoking a cigarette too. He said, well, I hope everything works out for you. And I stood there and I thought about it. And I said, why are I looked at the cigarette like, why am I smoking this? I've, I've done campaigns against squares. What is this? I had to kick it. I'm sick of it. I'm smelling, I'm smelling my skin and my hair smelling funny. And I'm like, uh-uh. But when you get sick of certain things in your life that are not creating the results that you want, that means you need to go back to the drawing board. That means you need to make some changes. And I'm going to tell you something else. I'm super grateful that God isolated me and ended certain relationships. Because if I had these relationships, I wouldn't be where I need to be right now. See, sometimes we get sick of certain situations, but God is sick of us, okay? And so God will say, okay, you keep praying to me about this situation. Well, let me, let me remove you. And sometimes we feel like we're being picked on when God is putting us in a position where you need to work on you. It's like the prodigal son had everything at his fingertips and went out and did his own thing, lived his best life only to find himself in a pigsty in, in the place of, in the place of uh, mud in a pigsty with pigs, knowing that he's a King's kid. When you know what you know about who you are as a person, then you don't find yourself just in any place. There are some places I can't go no more. Not because I don't, I dislike the people or because I think I'm better. It's because where I'm trying to go, I can't get caught up in y'all foolishness. I got sick of myself not having the results that I was looking for. And see, when the prodigal son was tired of rolling around with the pigs, guess what? He went back home to get himself together. And guess what? His father opened him, welcomed him with open arms because that's the redemption that we got to give to one another. We quick to cancel each other out, but we ain't quick to help each other. We quick to dog each other out, but we ain't quick to say, hey, what, what's going on with you? Come on, uh -uh, come on in here. We quick to judge one another and I'm sick of it. 
And if you're tuning in, you're listening to Yeah, I Said It. And before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. And I know you heard me the first time. Listen, follow me on Facebook. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. You know Zsa because you do. And if you're tuning in, we're talking all about I'm sick of it. Because at the end of the day, sometimes that isolated incident can create the peace that you need to focus. If I'm hanging out with them and turning up with them and on the phone with her all day, I can't get nothing done. I'm sitting up here with him, laying up with him or uh, laying up with her or going, hanging out with them. How am I going to be effective with what God has placed in my hands if I'm not working toward it? And the Bible says you better work wise day because it's going to come a time where we won't be able to work. There's going to come a time. We don't know the day nor the hour. And so some of you all are operating as if you just. You just got the formula. You don't know what tomorrow brings. And when you operate with not knowing what tomorrow brings, you move a certain type of way. You don't deal with certain things no more, even when it comes from yourself. There are some things that I don't deal with, even with myself. I don't when I remember I used to down talk myself and say things about myself that 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 made me feel worse than what I already felt. And then my son father would try to disrespect me. You know, I was all kind of bees. I was every B-I-T-C-H I could be. I was every, I, I was always ain't sugar, honey, iced tea. And you know, that stuff starts playing a toll on you. Like, well, maybe I ain't shit. Well, maybe I am messed up. Well, maybe that is what it is. And see, that's the psychological enemy because we are not fighting against flesh and blood. We are fighting against these principalities and darkness of this world. There are spirits that are on people and they are operating with that spirit on them. And if you are not prayed up, careful, fasting and and acknowledging and asking God for the wisdom and the knowledge that you need to to pick apart these situations, these situations will overtake you. There were things that I thought I would not be able to be delivered from because I did not strengthen my faith. Your faith got to be strengthened in this fight. This got to be a faith fight. I ain't letting you take me out. I ain't letting COVID take me out. I ain't letting being a parent take me out. I ain't letting the lack of money take me out. I ain't about to let depression take me out. I ain't letting anxiety take me out. I ain't letting not having this situation take me out. Okay, I ain't got a car, but I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna trip because I had a car before. So I know if God got me a car before, I'm gonna give me a car. I'm gonna be on this bus. I know I don't wanna be on this bus, but I'm gonna be on this bus and I'm gonna get to where I need to go and I'm gonna do what I need to get done. See, when you start having the mindset of by any means necessary, you stop looking at what you don't have, what you do have, who's there, who ain't there, because you just get so sick of the BS that you now, I got to zero in. I got to, I got to beam in. I got to get focused. Oh, you don't want to talk to me no more? Okay, bye. Oh, car broke down? Okay, let me put my gym shoes on. Okay, I don't got enough money for this. All right, well, let me see what I can get. I tell people all the time, do what you can with what you have until you can do more than what you had. When I got my house, I was sleeping on my massage table. It wasn't comfortable. Okay. But that's all I had. It was the massage table or the floor. And I wasn't sleeping on no more floors. So I put myself on the massage table until I could afford to get a bed. You understand what I'm saying? See, sometimes you're going to have to work your way up. This thing, you can't. Sometimes you can just jump to green light go. Jump. But then sometimes... God says, no, nope, we're going to take this step by step. If you're tuning in, you're listening to y'all said it. Before I take you back, I'm going to add more to it. I'm talking all about sick of it. Because sometimes we get sick of ourselves. And at the end of the day, you learn to say, you know what? Let me get myself together. Let me pay attention to what's going on in my world, in my mind. Let me feed my soul what it needs to be fed because some of you feel some type of way because you feeding, you being fed the wrong thing. You listening to the wrong music. You, you talking to the wrong people. Let me tell you something. I don't talk to nobody that they got less than me unless I'm mentoring them. How you going to tell me how to do this and you ain't even doing it? How you going to help me and you can't even help yourself? How you, what? Some people be listening to some of the most retardedest people. I just be, I just be like, so you mean to tell me you getting advice from people who they still live at home with their mama? Like, I can't get no advice from you. 
That's why you got to be mindful of what you allow to be fed into your spirit. And see, this is the thing. Nobody likes to be checked. Everybody wants happy-go-lucky. They want their life to be full of sunshine and rainbows and unicorns. And you just want to pop bottles and eat and live the good life. But nobody wants to be checked or chastised. Nobody wants to be critiqued. And that's where you go wrong. Because in order for you to get to the sunshines and the rainbows and, and the beautiful days, you're going to have to work on some things about you. There were some things about me that I had to get checked. I never forget when I worked for Kathy Garrett and I first got the job. I was 21 years old. And I called myself clapping back at the lady that was the manager. God rest her soul, Miss Perkins. I never forget. Miss Garrett came back from out of town, pulled me in that office. She said, um, I'm going to let you, you, you I'm going to have to let you go. Let me go. Did I just get fired? I mean, I was crying like, oh my God, I just got fired. And the thing about it was, is that it taught me a lesson. You gonna have to get you together. What works over here in the hood, it ain't working in this office. Now, don't get me wrong. Your hood skills are necessary and they gonna be necessary for everything you do in life. However, there are some things that you just can't take with you in certain places. And that was one of them. And that was my first humbling experience being under the tutelage of somebody else because I had to check myself. How do you want to be great if you are not willing to check yourself? And how are you not willing to be great and not be checked by somebody else? And see, older folks got this habit bad. Some of y'all 50, 60 year olds. Yeah, I said it. And before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. No disrespect. But you all need to be checked, too. You all are out of pocket. You're supposed to be teaching the younger people, but you're jealous of them. You're envious of them. You don't want to help them. You're always judgmental. And every time I turn around, we want to say, oh, I'm shaking my head. That don't make no sense. But who are you helping? Who are you mentoring? All, you, all I hear older people do is complain about what young people ain't doing. All I ever hear is older people telling young people about what they need to be doing. Why are you helping them do it? What, what young folks do you have under your tutelage? What, what, who are you teaching to be better? But I'm going to tell you something. People can't invest in you if they ain't invested in themselves. People can't help you if they don't even want to help themselves. People are upset at my growth. Because I'm not who I used to be. Oh, but don't get it twisted. Joy Rose Jaja is still there. Okay? Had to let some folks know last month. Stop playing with me. Stop playing with me. Because when you get sick of certain stuff, you don't have time to play no more. Stop playing with my business. Stop playing with my ministry. Stop playing with my heart. Stop playing with my money. Stop playing with my mind. Stop playing with my kid's emotion. If you're going to be in his life, be in his life or stay the hell on. Yeah, I said it. And before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. Either you're going to be a friend or a foe. Which side you on? Because I ain't dealing with nobody in the gray area. It's black or white over here. Because see, the people who ride that fence, the people who ride that fence, they're going to mess you up because they always teeter tie. They over here. Then they over here. Then they over here. Now they back over here. You don't know where the loyalty lie, because guess what? They ain't loyal to themselves. They just going wherever, who going to accept them? Okay, oh, I'm going to be gay today. I'm going to be straight tomorrow. I'm going to be a, 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 a police officer today, a firefighter tomorrow. I want to do hair today. I want to do this tomorrow. And it's not to say that you cannot do multiple things or be multiple or have multiple things going on. But if you are not consistent with what you are doing and building, you will find yourself having the same situations over and over and over and over again. I was a hamster on the wheel, just going, 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 going. I, I'm, I'm thinking I'm making some movement and some progress, you know, because you, you, you're doing stuff. You, you're doing stuff. But then it becomes a, I'm, I'm busy, but it ain't productivity. There are no, there's no results or outcome from this. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting accolades and yeah, people noticing what I'm doing. But no, I, I got to dive a little deeper. 
See, when you start diving a little deeper into who you are as a, as a woman, as a man, as, as, a, as an individual, you know, I told my son, I said, go live, son. Ain't nothing stopping you from going to go live. Go live, go travel. You don't want to go there no more. Guess what? You ain't married a hell hostage to, 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 that, to that school. You want to go off and go somewhere else? Guess what? Do it. But see, sometimes, and see, and if I was the parent that says, no, you're going to stay there. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. And this is one of the reasons why we have so many problems within our families. Because at the end of the day, nobody want to listen to nobody. Everybody want to be grown. Everybody think they know it all. Let me tell you something. I ask God for wisdom and knowledge every day. There's, there's, there's not enough knowledge and enough wisdom because the world that we live in, you need it. If you are not asking God for knowledge and wisdom on the stuff that you are building, you are going to miss out on some amazing relationships and some amazing opportunities. Because if you're moving off self, you're going to mess yourself up. See, when you're moving off self, you think, oh, this is a great relationship. It's going to be a great come up. And, and all the while, they got an agenda in their head for you. But you thinking, you operating off self. And you ain't saying, God, should I partner with these people? Yeah, this sound good, but God, you sh show me, tell me, give me, give me, give me something. You know, God talks to me through my seniors because that's who I respect. Not to say I don't respect everybody, but I know that uh, most people that are seniors, they, they, they're already settled in their spirit. And so they're not going to steer me wrong when I come to them for advice. They already got their fab 401k. They already got their social security. <laughs> they already got everything set up. So me seeking advice from them, they ain't taking nothing from me. They're adding value to me. That's why I seek their counsel. And see, when you are seeking counsel of people that you can respect and trust, they won't steer you in the wrong direction. But you listening to dummies, listening to people that, that don't got more than you, they got less than you, you can't. Help me. Yeah, you can give me your opinion, but what I'm supposed to do with that? I can't take your opinion to DTE and I'm trying to run a business. I need to make some income. I can't take your opinion about how you feel about me and, and, and take it to Metro PCS. No, they want their $83. And here you are, you all crying because of what somebody just said about you and how somebody feel about you and you got an attitude and you ain't talking to nobody and -ra -ka 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 -ka. like grow up grow up some of us are so immature that we don't like being checked and critiqued we don't like nobody saying nothing wrong to us we don't we just want to live we just want to walk and just we just out here and this is one of the reasons why we keep losing generation after generation after generation. Because don't nobody want to speak up to the BS that's happening. We just turn a blind eye to it. When I see my young men out here in the streets, what up though, y'all? What's good? They be cracking up laughing. They don't even believe that I'm really like this. And I be telling them like, this is me. What up though, y'all? Y'all straight? Y'all good? Oh yeah, we good. Woo, 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 woo. All right, y'all great young kings. Don't get in no trouble out here in these streets. Don't get caught up in woo, woo, woo. I give them a little two piece and a biscuit and keep it moving. Because you never know the words that you impart in someone will catapult them to the next level in life or you will cause them to decline. So at the end of the day, listen, if you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, make those necessary changes. And before you decide that you want to uh, kick somebody to the curb, or the next time you decide that you want to be haughty or prideful or let your ego lead, I want you to think about, is this something that's making me healthy or is this something that's making me sick? Because you don't always have to be physically sick. Some of us are emotionally sick. Some of us are spiritually sick. Some of us have gotten to the point where we don't even realize that we even need a cure and love is the cure. Some of us don't even realize we need a hug. We angry. I remember being a single mother and I was angry. I was angry at men. I was just like, oh, oh. The next man, I'm going to just blow his junk out. He played with my heart because <laughs> I'm angry. I'm raising this kid by myself. And so in your mind, 
I didn't realize I needed some healing. OK, and I wasn't talking about no sexual healing either, because that's what got me in this foolishness in the first place. OK, I, I'm, a, I'm an expert at that. But see, at the end of the day, as a parent, as a woman, I knew I needed emotional support. That's the balance that parents bring to children. There's a balance that happens when there is a support, when there is a a baseline for things. And if you're not careful, we'll skip out on parts that we actually need because we're not sick and tired of ourselves. Before you decide you want to check anybody else about anything they got going on, you make sure you do a self-awareness check on yourself. Is this coming out of ego? Is this coming out of pride? Is this coming out of trauma? Is this coming out of hurt? Is what I'm about to say going to help this situation? Is what I'm about to do go hinder me from where God's getting ready to put me? This is one of the reasons why I can't be with everybody. And I'm okay with whoever decided to walk away. God knew you weren't supposed to be with me. Ain't no love lost. We ain't beefed out. But I knew that at this particular point, God said, they not emotional ready. You may be emotionally ready, but they not. You may be physically ready, but they not. You may be mentally ready or financially ready, but they are not. And the minute that a person can do you any kind of way on this level, imagine when you get to this level, what they would do to you. So I have learned in all things, give God glory, because there's a reason why certain things pan out the way that they do. Some people we want to hold on to. Oh, God, it was some people, some friendships, some loves that I just said, man, what's up? Why I got to be like this? But see, it had to be like this in order for me to focus on what God has for me. This is a real ministry, no matter what it is that you think it is or whatever the case may be. What you do is ministry. The people you touch on an everyday basis from the person at the gas station to the liquor store to the beauty supply store to the doctor's office. Them are all the people that God has walked in alignment in your life. And see, the blessings that I receive is because I walk in alignment with what God has for me. And I don't take my burdens, my trauma, my issues, my ego, or my pride with me when I'm out here living my best life. I walk, I walk in love. And when you are walking in love, you can recognize when people don't have love for you. When you're walking in love and you happy and you feeling, you feeling like, you feeling like it's golden? Then I don't mean everything is okay. That's And that's another thing. People just assume because I'm always happy that everything in my life is just aligned. No, I'm trying not to go crazy. And I'm just going to smile and praise God through this situation. Because I know that I'm not staying in this situation. I'm going through it. And when you know that you're going to go through a situation and not stay in it, you can smile. You know what? You acting crazy. I understand. I, you know what? I'm going to pray for you and I'm going to keep it moving because this situation is not about to take me out and it's not about to take me over. I got stuff to do. So I'm about to go on over here where I'm appreciated and I'm celebrated and not tolerated. So when you learn to be sick and tired of yourself, you start making those necessary adjustments so that God can really do a thing in your life and stop trying to take People and things with you that no longer fit your purpose. There are some people that I genuinely wanted to be with me, but God knew more about them than I did. And sometimes we think we know people. Oh, that's been my friend for such and such and such. Oh, me and him been together for such and such and such. You don't know what these people have in their mind and in their heart. See, that heart is going to, is going to, uh, it's going to propel what's in the mind. If it's envy in the heart, the mind is going to move in a way of envy. If there's jealousy in the heart, the mind is going to start saying things that is that, that causes jealous and, and situations. If, if there is if there is hate in the heart, guess what? They mind going to move in hate. Baby, you can't fake that. That heart and that mind, that stuff is aligned. See, I move in love because my heart and my mind is the same. They operate the same. So whatever's in here, it's going to form here and you're going to operate in that way. 
everybody ain't gonna operate in the way you do. But at the end of the day, you stay true to who you are. And as you stay true to who you are, you keep walking in alignment. And the minute that you see some stuff that's out of line about yourself, you just make sure that you put yourself in a position to change it first before God has to put you in a position and he has to change it. You don't want God to change it because it becomes a humbling experience when God got to change that situation for you. Listen, I love y'all so much. Make sure y'all follow me on social media, on all my social media platforms. Make sure you tune in into my show tomorrow, Uncommon Conversations on channel 15.2, channel 90. Also check it out on my website, www.jajacihubbard.com or you can check me out on my YouTube channel you know Jaja because you do stop acting fake and stop acting like you don't know me because you do yeah I said it before I take it back I'm gonna add more to it listen I love you all so so very much and I'm gonna tell you something God is doing a new thing and in order for God to do the new thing you are gonna have to get rid of the old things okay in order for God to do the new things you gonna have to get rid of the old things the old things can't go. The old you can't go. That old geezer can't go. That old chicken head can't go. Them old bad money habits can't go. Them old eating habits can't go. Listen, in order for God to do a new thing, you're going to have to get rid of the old things. Until next week, I love y'all. Peace.